Now we all know DistroWatch, it's that website where we find a wide variety of Linux distributions and updates that looks like it was designed in 1997. It admittedly is not the best representation of like Linux distribution ranking because it's based on like clicks, but it does give us an idea of what is popular at the moment. And overall their list of top 20 or so is a really good one. And I thought based on their list, what is the least popular Linux distribution. And to actually make this a watchable video, one, the operating system needs to actually ship with the desktop environment and be installable. We're gonna pick a distro that's been on DistroWatch for at least six months, so the newest ones aren't marked as the least popular. So sorry, RLXOS and a commander, you're not the least popular for this uh, video. So after my own personal filtering and bias, that leaves us with OSGO Live, which is also the least popular distribution on the six month list. Now I'm really happy that this is the most popular because this is one of the few cases that I'm actually uh, kind of qualified to talk about something. <laughs> But before I get into that, OS Geo Live is a bootable DVD, USB thumb drive, or virtual machine based on Lubuntu that gives the user a wide variety of open source geospatial software without installing anything. Composed entirely of free software, allowing it to be freely distributed, duplicated, and passed around. OS Geo Live provides pre configured applications for a range of geospatial use cases, including storage, publishing, viewing, analysis, and manipulation of data. It also contains sample data sets and documentation. So right here is our login. I have already went ahead and installed this system. So we're in the system here. Let's make it a little more legible. There we go. Our system's now legible. This is OSGO Live. And I talked about a little bit ago that I'm actually moderately qualified to talk about this. And that is because I'm uh, about to start my very last quarter at Eastern Washington University because I'm actually getting my bachelor's degree in geosciences with an emphasis on GIS and uh, geography overall. Even the shirt here, take flight. The Student Research Creative Works Symposium. That was from my uh, capstone class. So with that, I do have a uh, particularly um, unique love for maps and basically all the software that surrounds this Linux distribution specifically. Granted, you could just go ahead and pull this on whatever distribution you'd like, but it, a lot of the stuff is pre-included here for you. And the one tool that I am familiar with, you see here there's a specific category called Geospatial. We have browser clients, databases, desktop GIS, which right here, QGIS, is the one I'm familiar with, but we have a bunch of different things such as uh, OpenStreetMap, various spatial tools, and other web services. So for example, if I open up the one application I actually have some experience in, which is QGIS, this is probably one of the most in-depth, best free and open source applications that is available to download today. You could do all kinds of things with it, and I am hoping that it does have a sample project. Otherwise, I'll have to go find one. Ooh, QGIS examples. There we go. Let's do Natural Earth, open that up. There we go, beautiful. So this looks like a uh, colored topographic-ish map, rather low resolution, so the appropriate resolution seems to be about this. Not that great of an example, but basically with GIS software, you could do a whole bunch of things such as a data analysis, so I could, uh, pull a bunch of like census data, for example, and figure out like areas of poverty, and then maybe get that poverty data and link it up to like industrial data and figure out why certain neighborhoods are located in certain places and actually see patterns and trends to give examples of why poor neighborhoods might be in an industrial area. That's just one of thousands of examples that I could give. I'm gonna open the other one, see if it's a more high resolution sample project. Yeah, see, this looks a little better. There's not a very good base map, but here we can see the state. I believe this is uh, Minnesota. We have our counties there, and then we have our specific data. And then this data here, we have line, we have polygon data. Well, this is all mostly uh, vector data. There's vector and raster data. Vector data is like specific points, polygon shapes, things like that, while raster data is more kind of broad and spread out. For example, a street or a uh, shape here will be a vector piece of information, while a raster can be something like the temperature spread out over an entire map. We have our browser tools over here, so if you're not familiar with this kind of software, it can really do a lot of things. And over here we have some of that example. So we have the option to add a raster layer, a mesh layer. We could do a spatial light, light layer, virtual layer, post GIS layers, and then a, a whole lot more. So for example, if 
I want to add a raster layer, this is where we would go ahead and pull our data set here. But over here, we also have our layers, so we can actually control these. We can see our major country roads, so I could go ahead and disable specific layers if I'd like to, and then change some of the symbology. We have our lakes, our community boundaries, which I believe is counties in this case. But yeah, it's cool that I found a, a distro that gives me an excuse to talk about my major. So let's disregard that and talk about some of the other things that we get in here, other than the background, which I think is super cool right here. I just did a class called a Critical Cartographers, which I analyzed and made a bunch of different kind of uh, these more artistic -y style of uh, maps. So going back over here into Geospatial, we, again, we have our browser clients. So we have GeoMouse, Geo ext open layers bunch of stuff if i open something up here so this one geo ext it looks like it's putting us right into that county that we were kind of exploring earlier which it might be pulling the exact same data but i'm not 100 percent sure it is the proper state though here we have some data so we have the elevation the quadrants the names and we have our map layer so i do think that this is that same data but i open this up there's a quick start page so we could get a lot of information here overall this just seems to be a really cool uh combination of a bunch of free and open source uh, geospatial stuff let's try out a geo styler a lot of these again i don't i ha don't have very much experience with nor have even played around with for my degree i spend most of my time in arcgis pro which is like the uh, esri's like the major big proprietary company that handles a lot of the geospatial data map making and all that at least in the united states i'm pretty sure a majority of places I wonder what open jump is Jump Unified Mapping Platform. Oh, this looks like a really old version of like Arc. <laughs> we have a bunch of, we have some database tools. So this is spatial light GUI. And we can see at least some of the categories. We don't have actually any data pulled up in here at the moment, but we can kind of see what's going on to top. Topography, <laughs> raster, vectors, etc. R Statistics is a really big one. Oh, it's the shell. So it doesn't have R Studio. It doesn't have R Studio. Yeah, so they have R, but they don't have R Studio, which is kind of weird. Maybe this will open it up. No, it's just going to open the shell again. R is a statistics tool that could be used in a lot of uh, geoscience applications, really any statistic application. You're probably going to end up using R Studio for a bunch of different things. You could make a bunch of uh, distribution graphs. It's a phenomenal tool. And while I was in that class, the geostatistics class that I was covering for it, I actually had my very own, like, R Studio server running on a Linode, which I could access really easily, and then it would save everything automatically in there. And I had it running through Docker. Super cool stuff. Which actually, this is a good opportunity to thank our sponsor, Linode, on Akamai Connected Cloud. Like I said, I used it to host R Studio on Docker, and I'm currently using it to host a lot of my backend services for my website using Docker. You could set up just a base vanilla install of a wide range of Linux distributions, or use one of their one click installers to get a wide variety of Linux servers spun up with ease. And better yet, use the link down below, and you can get yourself a $100 60 day credit for new users. Ooh, the OpenStreetMap Editor. I've never used this before. So downloading map data of our service of choice. This looks fine. Oh, we could select the area. Let's select France. Download. It's too big or too large. Okay. Let's try this again. Let's zoom into my uh, city. Since we're talking about my school, let's come on here to the city my school is in, specifically this area right here. Let's give that a select to see if this area is too big. Download. There we go. I guess it didn't want me to download the entirety of the uh, French mapping data. All right, so this is super cool to me. We have parking lots, we have mapped out areas of specific buildings, and somebody actually probably went through here and actually drew all this out, which I find quite fascinating. And we have an editor here, so if like I wanted to make an adjustment for a particular project of mine, I can move it, you can move the item. And let's say that there was a construction project or something and I needed to move this street right here like this, actually balance it out and <laughs> I don't know, super cool stuff. We have the option to draw nodes and prove an accuracy of a node. A bunch of fun you could have in here. I'm going to close this for now. Exit now because I don't have an actual project or anything associated with editing open map data. If I go to OSM or OpenStreetMaps online, this should be what I was talking about a minute ago, the actual kind of a front facing consumer level mapping thing you all are probably used to. And honestly, out of all the uh, base level or the uh, base maps, um, which when I mean base map, there's like just raw street, there's uh, topographic, there's a bunch of different ones. 
the coloring and all that of the open street maps is my personal preference that they make it really easy to kind of uh, differentiate various components elements and street types I, I really like these maps now as you can probably tell i'm not super familiar with a lot of the tools here i've like i've said arcgis is more of my uh, area of quote unquote expertise but if you're interested in learning more they do have their website there's a whole presentation here that will uh kind of run you over or give you a overview of some of the features and some of the things that they offer. So here it's an open source geospatial GNU Linux distribution. It gives you an overview of what's new, the foundation, desktop GIS. So if I go down, grass GIS, and it'll go over some more of these actual applications, which a lot of these look super old. QGIS, again, is going to be the one that has the most uh, professional use in the real world when it comes to this uh the open source options but yeah definitely some super cool stuff i'll go ahead and link to this pre presentation we have browser facing gis stuff if we go over we have various web services data sources so how you actually want to store and manipulate that and then navigation marble that's cool here let's go let's check that out wow it's a whole atlas oh where to go Roop. there we go Wow, ooh, and we got the constellations too. Absolutely beautiful. And when I was talking about the base maps just a second ago, these are some examples of what I mean when I say base maps. We have uh, Atlas, which is this one, OpenStreetMap, which I was talking about how I personally like it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Even though it's not pulling up some of the uh, elements or borders. Unless if we get a little closer like that. There we go. Then we have our satellite view, political map. So this is going to be a map that you see on like your fifth grade globe. Precipitation map. So this is like tracking rain data. And this is an example of a raster data. So it's covering the whole map. It's not individual points. It's a resolution set of data spread out over an area. And that's December. So if we go to July precipitation, it's not going to be as much. And that's one of the things I like about map is kind of comparing and contrasting different sets of data. Here's temperature data. We don't have a key or anything to work off of, so I'm not sure what the uh, different shades of yellow and orange specifically mean, but you can see how the temperature changes as we go from December to July. And of course, with that historical map, we have this one, which is a, <laughs> that's even unusable for historical. And let's go to the actual historical map. There we go. That's cool. We have the California Peninsula here. Wow. Okay, well, that is um, kind of the most popular or least popular distribution on DistroWatch. I do hope you enjoyed. I do hope this might have spurred your curiosity in the uh, geosciences and geographic information system mapping area. Um, and with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.